everyone. Here we are for yet another Thursday Tips and Tricks. I'm um, glad you could join me. As promised, we're going to continue our lessons on Takarazi. We're going to be working with the Flying Geese Unit. It's probably one of the most famous units in uh, quilt making. And we're going to be looking at a wide variety of different ways that you're being instructed to build Flying Geese and some of the pluses and minuses and then how I go on to create my Tuckerize flying geese. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started. So let me get behind the camera. We'll get down to our horizontal surface. Um, remember that if you would like to Tuckerize something, there are three steps to the process. First, you have to recognize the unit. Then you want to analyze what you're being told. And then... Um, Make the changes to your cutting before you uh, begin your project. So we're working with flying geese. The tool that um, I've designed to work with that is called the wing clipper. But let's take a look at how different pattern writers are telling you to build different flying geese units. Now, when I take a look at this one, uh, it's great, great quilt. Could see myself making this. There are units that look like flying geese, but they're not building these as flying geese. They're actually having me build a flying goose looking unit by building two half square triangles and then placing them together with a seam down the middle. Now, that's not what I would do in this case because I need four of them and they're all the same. I would choose another method uh, for doing them this way. But if you do decide that you want to make a project this way, go ahead and tuckerize this also. Instead of cutting your squares three and seven eighths, cut those starting squares four inches. When you build them, press the seams open all, on all counts. Press the seams open when you're creating the half square triangles and press the seam open here to help distribute the bulk around that point. And you know, I say I wouldn't make a project like this, but I may. If I were making this project, which has these same units in there, uh, flying geese units, I would consider doing them uh, this method to get a scrappy look, but I would not cut two and three eighths inch squares. I would cut my squares two and a half, press the seams open, trim each one down so that when I go to build those units, I get a better chance of having them be exactly the way I want them to be precise and straight and even. So that's one way that you're going to be told how to make flying geese. Now let's take a look at a couple of other ways. In this book, the project requires a row of five flying geese. And the, the writer uh, instructed me to make those flying geese using a paper foundation construction method. Now I know there's a love-hate relationship out there with paper foundation piecing. Um, I find it to be not extremely efficient, and I also find it to be pretty wasteful. There's a good amount of fabric that, that is um, cut off at the end. So how would I go about tuckerizing if I wanted to do this with another method? Well, what I would do first is go to the pattern that they have for me to use for my paper foundation piecing. I would take that and what I would do with a ruler is measure. I would measure from the tip to the base and from point to point. Those will give me the finished sizes of the flying geese and that's what I need to know in order to be able to proceed forward and tuckerize them with using another method. Now there are times when you really must use paper foundation piecing. If you're doing something like this where the geese are kind of on a curve or in, or in an unusual configuration, you're going to need to do paper foundation piecing. So I'm glad I know it, but if I have a choice, I'll usually choose something different. Now, let's pull up a few more ways that you are going to be seen uh, in your books and patterns and magazines for constructing flying geese. This particular method is one that you'll see often. Um, if you have templates, it will be this. If you use die cut pieces, it will be this. Or if you use specialty rulers, uh, it's the method where you're instructed to build the flying geese 
by cutting half square triangles and quarter square triangles individually. Each one, sometimes you're instructed uh, to just cut squares and then cut them in half once or cut them in half twice to create the half square and the quarter square triangles. But the premise here is that perfect cutting is going to lead to perfect units. And that isn't always the case. The perfect cutting you can do fairly easily, but it also then requires for your construction to align things perfectly, to stitch them perfectly, to press them perfectly, to do more of the same, and then end up with units that are exactly the right size. And if you live in the real world, you know that that's a pretty tough act to make everything perfect with that precision cutting. So I can do it this way, takes more time, adds a little bit more stress, not the method that I choose most often. This is a method that you will see probably more frequently than all the others. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, it's a method where you start with a rectangle and two squares, place the square in the corner, draw the diagonal line, stitch on the line, and then fold that corner back into place. Now, you can get some pretty good results with that. And it's okay, but I have an issue with the amount of fabric that they cut away from underneath and have you simply discard or, you know, save for another project. You know, there are 30 different stars in this project. Each star, each single star has this much waste. That bothers me. I don't like to have that um, in my quilting processes. So of all the flying geese, construction methods, this is usually the one that I choose last. Now, that is especially important when you're doing something like this. These flying geese that you see around the edges are quite large. They are actually 5 inch by 10 inch flying geese, which means you have an exorbitant amount of waste and you have that on every single unit that you're building around the edges. Please think about investigating my wing clipper tool if because we go all the way up to five inch by ten inch but let's talk about the method the method that i like to use for my construction with my flying geese is known by a couple different names some people call it fast flying geese some people call it the no waste method it's becoming popular in magazines i've been actually doing it for about 18 years and it's a method where you start with four, five squares four small squares and a large square and go through a construction process that will end up giving you four finished flying geese and i like it because it's very efficient but what happens is most magazines will have you cut the small squares and the large square a precision size, which means that all your steps, your stitching, your positioning, your pressing has to be equally precise. And if these aren't precise at the end, oh, well, it's your fault. And that's what gave me the impetus to create my flying geese method and my wing clipper tool. My premise is this. If you start with your squares oversized, then what will happen is your units will be oversized and I can make them be perfect by trimming them down and cleaning them up with a, my wing clipper tools to be the best, most forgiving um, construction method out there. So let's take a look. How would I tuckerize this project? The finished size, the, I'm sorry, the unfinished size. Each unit should be three and a half by six and a half inches unfinished with the seam allowances. Open the wing clipper set of instruction. Find either the finished size, three by six, or that unfinished size, three and a half by six and a half, which is what they're telling me. This will tell you what size squares I use to make these a little better, a little bigger. The seven and a quarter inch square gets bumped up to seven and a half, and the three and seven eighths inch square get bumped up to four inches. That little bit of extra wiggle room in the squares is what gives you the opportunity to build these units four at a time, to build them slightly oversized, and then come back with a tool that has guidelines on it, making it very easy to center over your unit. The guidelines are here and here. You trim it up 
with very little waste, you end up with the perfect units that you're desiring to go on and build the remainder of your project. Now, you'll see here, I have 19 sizes. Well, there are 10 sizes on the original wing clipper. The original wing clipper does flying geese units that are built on whole inch and half inch, one and a half by three, two by four, three by six. So all of the increments on these are whole inch and half inch. Every once in a while, there's a designer who wants you to create flying geese that are something in a quarter or something in three quarters. And that's why I created the wing clipper too. All of the sizes on there are quarter, three quarter inch increments, giving you total 19 sizes. Um, and all of the construction is efficient and forgiving. So I'll let me come back up and take a look at some of the projects that we've created using Flying Geese Tool. And you know, when you go to our website, you can visit the, um, you can visit the video page and we'll walk you through step by step how you build those, how you construct them with that no waste method or the fast flying geese method. But just take a look at these projects. This is a free bonus project. You can download that. It's called the Charleston Lily. I designed that for my friend Marie Boswick who uh, wrote a book uh, a year or two ago called The Restoration of Celia Fairchild. And that's the quilt that I designed for her. It's also posted on her website. This is my miniature Carolina Lily. All those lily blocks are made with flying geese. Amusement. Three different sizes of, or three different blocks of flying geese in each one. This is called Star Shadows. Now, Star Shadows actually has three different size flying geese in it. It has one inch by two inch, one and a half by three, and two by four. And you know, you do not have to go out and buy a second or a third ruler to get each of those different sizes. They're all on one tool, plus there's seven more. That's another good thing about my tools is they give you a lot of value. This is called Magic Carpet. There are just a few flying geese that are located in the center of that block. This is called Atlantic Flyway, loaded with flying geese going around the center in the stars in the corner. These are actually called migrating geese. So when you visit that website to learn how to make flying geese, check out the migrating geese video as well. This one is called, uh, oh, I can't think of it right now. Um, something flight. <laughs> and this is from my uh, country, country fair quilt with flying geese creating that zigzaggy board around the outside. That one's called Zigzag Zany. And I can't, still can't remember the name of that one. But anyway, that's what happens when you're doing video. Something is always going to go wrong. Hey, everybody. I hope that this helps you to understand a little bit more about flying geese, about why you might be struggling with it, and how you can avoid the struggles in future projects that happen to contain that flying geese unit. So I'll see everybody in a couple more weeks. You take care, have some fun. Bye everybody.